There are so many video game activists in my comments section that are very upset that I'm even remotely standing up for Star Wars Battlefront 2. I've seen similar comments about the fact that I play Destiny or Call of Duty as well. But you see, publishers and developers do very, very funny things to get your money no matter what. Imagine if you as a publisher had a development team that worked underneath you that created one of the most popular pseudo milsim military first person shooters ever and then they also worked on a movie tie-in competitive shooter for Star Wars. Or imagine if you were a publisher that had two development teams or several development teams under them one of them works on a space loot and shoot grinding RPG and the other one works on a Twitch arena style shooter. At first I was of course talking about EA with Battlefield and Battlefront and of course just then I was talking about Destiny and Call of Duty. Let's say you despise the way that Activision and Bungie puts out content for the Destiny games. You hated it. You hated that the games feel a little bit small and stunted and limiting and then ask you to buy DLCs and wait two years for the rest of all of the content to come out. And in protest, you don't buy the second game, you return the first game, you don't touch the season passes. But do you play Call of Duty? Because Activision owns that one too. It's really clever. Whether you like Call of Duty or Destiny or both, Activision makes a shit ton of money, and seeing how those are humongous game releases, it's likely that I would say one out of five gamers owns or plays those franchises. That doesn't mean they buy microtransactions or season passes, so let's move on to something a little bit more topical, because nobody wants to talk about season passes or locking shit behind season passes anymore, because we're all about loot boxes, and what is the face of the loot box issue, and I do mean issue, with the gaming industry? Well, right now, that face is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, even though they reduced the price of heroes, even though they've removed microtransactions, and even though you cannot get the highest value star cards out of the crates, you have to craft those with your in-game currency, there's still, and I'm not meaning this sarcastically, there's still too much random in Battlefront 2. And I fully respect and understand the people that won't even give the game a second thought until it's fixed. And I hope it is fixed, because the gameplay itself is very fun and I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Now there's all these little video game activists out there that are really uh, keen to tell people what they should and shouldn't be playing because of what company it does or doesn't feed. A and the reason I find this hilarious is that I want to know how many of them also buy Battlefield and Battlefield Premium Passes. If we're talking about money going to a company you don't want to have your money, then every Battlefield player that does not like Battlefront's current system needs to not spend a dime on the Battlefield franchise. Because isn't that money that you spend on Battlefield still going to EA? I mean, I know Battlefield is handled differently, I know it's not the exact same system, but again, we're talking about money going to EA. So you are still showing support to EA. They have you stuck. You don't like the new Battlefront system, you don't like it, you don't want to put money into it, but you're a Battlefield fan, and they know that, and you're gonna spend money on the next Battlefield game, and the next Battlefield Premium Pass, and, and whatever the fuck else they want to charge you for. And you're probably thinking, boom, you're making something out of nothing, that's a really loose correlation. But there's another loose correlation that's flying around that I'm hearing from multiple different people, and it's not really good. Because what I'm hearing is that even though Battlefront removed microtransactions, it's still a really big deal that that was their plan. And of course, I don't think it's a small deal. I just think if a company does something bad, it becomes more irrelevant when they take it back. If like Xbox Live Gold was all of a sudden $100 a month, and then after a ton of backlash, it went back down to its normal price, and people were like, well, it doesn't matter if it's back to its normal price, look what they were trying to do. I don't know, I look at things because of where they are, you know, not where they were. It's the whole point of being cautiously optimistic. You hope that things get better, and you are prepared to take action if they don't. And believe me, I'm ready to start a shitstorm if Battlefront 2 does not get better when they finally issue the change to loot boxes and progression. And also believe me when I say I have been screwed over when it came to being optimistic and hoping things would change for the better. But still, at the end of the day, I think it's better to be cautiously optimistic, maybe even being a little bit of a sucker and then being let down, 
versus just being a cult of outrage or creating a cult of outrage. It's really easy to stand up for something when it doesn't cost you anything. If you wanted to send a message to EA, every EA game you have, you should demand a refund. You should not buy the next Battlefield. You should not buy premium passes. You should not buy fucking crates. You should not buy Need for Speed. You shouldn't play The Sims. Otherwise, you're just saying, I'm not buying your one shitty game, but you're not hurting them because they know they have you someplace else. All the Battlefield players that l are just having a ball. Oh, Battlefront's so stupid. <laughs> Let's boot up Battlefield. It's made by the same developers and has the same publisher. So, you know, let's support this game. Now, here's the real test of whether or not you've made it to this video, because if you haven't, you won't hear this part. If a publisher has two games, one is evil and corrupt, and the other one is fun and giving, and you pick the one that's fun and giving, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. There's actually nothing wrong with buying the evil game, but not indulging in any of its evil doings, instead just enjoying it with your friends like a normal human being, instead of being a fucking activist. But what I'm saying is that if you're really serious about critiquing what people are doing, I'm gonna make sure you're damn serious about critiquing what you're doing. Oh, Activision's so bad, I hate the way they treated Destiny. I'm gonna go play Call of Duty. Even if Call of Duty is more consumer friendly than Destiny, and I think it is, you kinda just get what you pay for, and if you didn't buy it to repetitively shoot people in 6v6 game modes, then I don't know why the fuck you bought it. But what I'm saying is, is even though Call of Duty might be considered more consumer friendly than Destiny and less of a money grab than Destiny, when it comes to DLCs and season passes and feeling like half the game's locked behind a paywall, by playing Call of Duty and buying the next Call of Duty, aren't you supporting it? Let me clarify this one more time, because people are just not understanding me recently. I think if a publisher makes two games, and you don't like the way one's being treated, and you like the way the other one's being treated, then buy the one you like, sure. I'm, that's for normal people, that's for sane people, that's for people that go, this loot box system sucks, but they said they're gonna fix it, so I'm gonna play and if it doesn't get better, I'll probably return it, or I'll just let it gather dust. But to these people that are so aggravated, and they're fighting the system, seriously, you have to fucking fight it all the time, or I'm not gonna take you seriously. If you're a Battlefield player that thinks EA is corrupt and evil the way they're treating Battlefront 2, don't show them support by giving Battlefield playtime, by giving Battlefield higher play numbers, by sending your money towards Battlefield. Even if it is objectively better than Battlefront, they still have your money. They still won. These companies that are out to get your money, they're out to get you for every dime you have. They still have your support when you buy their other franchise that they have their dick stamp all over. Let's say you're really anti-gun. You are extremely anti-gun. You don't want guns to exist, and I would totally respect that. But if I see you playing Call of Duty or Battlefield, I'm gonna be upset, and you're thinking, well, video game guns are not the same thing, Ian. And I would agree with you wholeheartedly. But do you know why Battlefield, Call of Duty, Rainbow Six Siege, Counter-Strike, do you know why they can have actual guns in their game? What I mean by that is L96s, M16s, AR15s, G36Cs, AK-47s, oftentimes, if not all times, they have to pay gun manufacturers for those licenses. Not to mention you might be accused of promoting the fetishization, if that's how you pronounce that, the fetishizing of firearms by playing violent video games that give a player a fake gun and tell them to go shoot people and rank up the gun and get camos on it and get attachments for it and make it yours, carve your clan tag into it. But practically, the gun manufacturers are getting money from Call of Duty, they're getting money from Battlefield, they're getting money from Counter-Strike, and any game that actually uses the likeness and name of a real gun. That's why some games come out and they don't use the actual gun name, and it just looks awfully like it. Sometimes they can get away with that. If you're against a car manufacturer because of something they did overseas, or something they did politically, but then you play Forza, well that game probably paid them Let's say Ford, for instance, you're against something Ford did. And there's Fords in Forza Horizon, so... I mean, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that if you're gonna be an activist, and you're not gonna give an inch, and this is fucking war to you, you have to act like it. You have to say, fuck UDA on every front. Sims, Need for Speed, Battlefield, or whatever. You gotta put a stop to all of it. Not just when they fuck up Star Wars.
If you don't like the way Activision does things to Call of Duty, and then you're gonna go buy the Destiny Season Pass, yo, they're still getting your cash, even if you don't like the Supply Drop system in COD, you like the DLC system in Destiny, it's a win-win for them. Are you trying to hit the company, or are you pissed at the game? Fake activism. Fake frustration. Virtue signaling is something I'm getting tired of. Hate bandwagons are something I've been getting tired of. So if you're gonna take it seriously, take it seriously all the time or shut the fuck up. And to clarify, if you made it to this point in the video, say angry boom. Right, so to clarify, I don't think that if you don't like Battlefront and you want to boycott that game, you should also boycott Battlefield. What I'm saying is if you're going to make a position about it, if you're going to push against these companies and against the content creators that play the games the companies make, and you're going to be a little keyboard warrior about it, then I want to see Battlefield on your desk. I want to see all your season passes returned. Call up Sony, call up Steam, demand your money back. No half measures means no half measures. You're taking them down. You're taking down the corporation, man. That's what I'm saying. That's the picture I'm trying to paint. Or you can be a rational human being, play the games you think are fun, don't indulge in the parts of it you think are scummy. All of this is to say, spend your money how you want, spend your time how you want. Just don't come to me with your activism. Don't come to me with your holier-than-thou virtue signaling, take down the evil corporations mentality if you're not gonna do a full measure. You just look like a fucking pussy. I'll keep you guys up to date on COD World War II, Supply Drop Weapons, and Battlefront 2's weird loot crate progression system. Also, the fact that Destiny 2 is releasing its first DLC before doing any meaningful post-launch free content updates. Really uh, pushing for people to get that expansion pass earlier this year, aren't you, Activision? See you when I see you guys. Goodbye. Remember guys, Angry Boom.